Good day, students! Welcome to another topic in our PE class. To formally start our lesson, first, we will identify the following. Content Standard Performance Standard and most essential learning competencies. Warm up or cool down. Let's refresh your memory about our previous lesson. Identify the kind of stretching. Write dynamic stretching or static stretching. Front of ties. Knee and thighs, march and reach, back of upper arm, side cross swings. Upper back, plank walkouts, chest, front leg raise toe top, front swings. Now let us see if your answers are correct. For today's topic, I will discuss important things about athletics. Let me start with a short background of athletics. Commonly known as athletics or track and field is a collection of sports events that involve running, throwing, and jumping. The name athletics is derived from the Greek word atlos, meaning contest. Dating back to the ancient Greeks, athletics was the only competition to be held in the first Olympic Games which took place in Athens in 776 BC. At that time, the single athletic event was known as the state a foot race which covered the length of the Athenian Olympic Stadium. In 1896, the first modern Olympic Games were staged. Although initially of limited appeal, the Olympics captured the imaginations of athletes and grew steadily, making track and field an international sports for the first time. In 1913, the International Amateur Athletic Federation or IAAF was formed by representatives from 16 countries. The IAAF was charged with establishing standard rules for the sports, approving world records, and ensuring that the amateur code was adhered to. It continues to carry out these duties today.
Track events often involve a field or a running track of varying measurements. These events are typically held in a 400-meter track. These include sprints, middle distance events, long distance events, hurdles, relays, road running, and race walking. Short distance or sprints, sprint or a short running race. In a track and field competition, there are generally three different sprint distances, 100 meters, 200 meters, and 400 meters. The middle distance races are 800 meters, 1,500 meters, and 3,000 meters. These races require different skills and tactics to win. They rely more on endurance and pacing than just pure speed. Also, the runners don't stay in a single lane for the entire race. They start out in staggered lanes to make the distance the same for each runner. But the race soon becomes open with the lanes and the runners must pass around each other to gain the lead. There are three main long distance races. 3,000 meters, 5,000 meters, and 10,000 meter races. These races are similar to the middle distance races, but the emphasis is even more on correct pacing and endurance. A hurdle race is one of which obstacles are placed at intervals along the track that the runners must jump over on their way to the finish line. Typical hurdle races are the 100 meters and 400 meters for women and 110 meters and 400 meters for men. Timing, footwork, and technique are the key in winning hurdles events. Of course, you still need to be fast, but jumping the hurdles in stride without much slowing down is how to win the hurdles. Relay races are team of runners. There are typically four runners and four legs to the race. The first runner starts with the baton and runs the first leg, handing off to the second runner. The handoff must typically take place within a given area of the track. The second then hands off to the third and the third to the fourth. The fourth runner runs the final or anchor leg to the finish line. Commonly, relay races are the 4 times 100 meters and the 4 times 400 meters. Road running is the sports of running on a measured course over established road as opposed to track and field. These events are usually classified as long distance according to athletic terminology, with races typically ranging from 5 kilometers to 42.2 kilometers in the marathon. Race walking is a long distance discipline within the sports of athletics. Although a foot race, it is different from running in that one foot must appear to be in contact with the ground at all times. The straight leg rule, by far the most important rule in race walking. Athlete's knee must not bend while the foot is replaced by another one until the leg passes from the center of the body. The next topic is about the facilities and equipment used in athletics. Track Facility, Track Oval The track has 8, 6, or occasionally 4 lanes, but the last is not used for international running competitions. An official oval running track has 2 straights of length 84.39 meters 
and two semicircular ends with an inside radius of 36.15 meters. A noble track is designed to be 400 meters around using the inside lane. These are the tools used in playing athletics. Equipment, baton, hurdles, starting blocks, starting gun, and spike shoes. Participating and performing well in running events requires some key skills to make it well in every event. The next topic will focus about the different skills of athletics. Mastering these skills will not waste any movement, will use essential muscles, use optimum force, and relax the muscles that will not be involved in your movements. Running skills body position. The head, trunk, and pelvis should be positioned along a vertical line, which is perpendicular to the ground. This helps to ensure that the pelvis is in the most efficient position. It should be obvious that the erect position better enables you to lift your knees, which, in turn, will increase stride length. Your head should be up with eyes focused 20 to 30 yards ahead. Runners have a tendency to look at the ground a short distance in front of their feet, usually have short, choppy stride as a result. Arms and Shoulder Carriage It is necessary to have arms and shoulders movement during running so that the torque produced by driving the legs is more easily absorbed. Your shoulder must move in coordination with the arms. The position of the arms should probably approach a right angle during the forward movement, but the exact position is not critical. However, you must not carry your arms excessively high for this can be very fatiguing. During the forward swing, your arms should not cross the imaginary midline which divides the body. Action of the legs there are two parts of leg action. These are number one, the recovery phase, and number two, the driving phase. In the recovery phase, the rear foot leaves the ground, and in the driving phase, the lead foot touches the ground. Running speed is the combination of stride length and frequency of the stride. Stride length and body lean will increase as one increases his speed. Foot action. A male runner has a landing touch with a heel ball action, which is where the heel hits the ground first. The weight is then transferred to the ball of the foot in a rocking chair fashion. Among female runners, the heel ball and ball heel ball is about the same. In the ball heel ball, the runner initially settles on the ball of the foot, then momentarily transfers the body's weight to the heel and then rolls forward again to the ball of the driving face. The heel ball landing top is suited to be more efficient over long distances because there is less strain put on the muscles of the calf. Master the sprint starts Starting a sprint race is all about explosion of speed and power. You do need to keep it under control. Being relaxed helps your body run efficiently and quickly at any distance. Try to breathe gently and await the starter's commands. The position of your body during your acceleration phase and top end speed are crucial in sprinting, but your time won't improve if your start is slow. The sprint start is intended to propel you into the race as fast as possible. When an athlete breaks technique, his or her speed decreases and he or she has a greater chance of fatiguing sooner. On your mark, Crouch on one knee and form a high bridge with your fingers just behind the line. Your hands should be placed slightly wider than your shoulder width. 
If you feel cramped, you are probably positioned too close to the start line. Don't get distracted by anything or anybody. Keeping your eyes focused on the ground ahead of you will help your balance, focus, and relaxations. Set. Raise your hips to a level just above your shoulders. Your head should not be dropped towards the ground but don't crick your neck by trying to look up the track. Lean your body as far forward as you can and aim to begin running without stumbling. Wait for that starting signal. Go. When then gun goes off, breathe out hard and pump those arms and legs. Try not to travel too far with each stride to start with. Thrust your elbows as high as possible with each backward swing and drive your legs with a high knee action. Keeping your body low in your opening strides will thrust you forward. For the last part are the phases of running. Initial contact. Mid stance. Take off. Initial swing. Mid swing. And terminal swing. For the activity, entitled Peer or Family Assisted Activity. Directions. Perform the following command in running. On your mark, set, and go. Put a check if it observed or not observed. Repeat the activity three times. Here are the references that I have used in doing my presentation. Photos used here are from Canva. I hope you learn important things about athletics. This has been your teacher in PE for today, Mrs. Cynthia Soledad S. Aspe. Leaving you a quote from runforgood.com. Running reminds you that even in your weakest moments, you are strong. Have a nice day!